Let's examine the unit vectors for polar coordinates in two dimensions. In the previous video, I introduced i hat and j hat. Those were the unit vectors for Cartesian coordinates in two dimensions. In this video, I'm going to introduce r hat and theta hat. Those are the unit vectors for polar coordinates. So let's start off with a diagram and illustrate what these unit vectors are doing in this two dimensional universe. So we can draw the origin of our coordinate system. And from the origin, we can draw our Cartesian unit vectors. So those are the ones that we covered in the previous video. So that's i hat, that's the unit vector in the horizontal direction, and j hat, that's the unit vector in the vertical direction. Then let's say we have some position vector that sits in this two-dimensional plane of the whiteboard. And let's call that one r. So this is r. And it's got an arrow in the top. And this arrow uh, is denoting that this guy is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. These guys are both vectors, but they're a special type of vector. They are unit vectors. So they get a special little hat instead of a dot. So i usually has a little dot, j usually has a little dot, but now they have hats because they are special vectors. They are the unit vectors that form a basis for this two dimensional vector space. So this is our two dimensional universe in the plane of the whiteboard. Now, let's introduce the unit vectors for polar coordinates. Unlike these two guys, the unit vectors for polar coordinates actually change. They depend on where the angle is. So over here we have, if we extend the uh, positive horizontal axis, we can actually draw an angle over here. And this angle is theta. And the distance from the origin to the tip of this vector that is the radial distance. We can call that the magnitude of this vector. And if we have the magnitude of the vector and this angle theta, then we have all the information we need to describe this vector. It's exactly the same as breaking this vector up into its horizontal and vertical components. If you break it up into the horizontal and vertical components, and you scale i hat and j hat, and then add them together, you can decompose that vector into its components. But here, we're not composing it into its uh, Cartesian components, we're decomposing it into its polar coordinates. So we need an angle, and that angle is measured from this horizontal axis over here, from the positive horizontal axis, and we measure upwards, that's a positive angle, downwards is a negative angle, and then we just need to have the magnitude of the vector, which is equivalent to the radial distance from the origin. So that's from this base of the vector over here to the tip of the vector. Now, let's add in those unit vectors. So we're going to have one unit vector going in the same direction as this vector. So it's going in the radial direction. I'm going to call that guy r hat. So we have to be careful. Uh, we don't want to confuse this guy with this guy. This is the unit vector. So it has a hat on top. And this guy is the full vector r. So this guy can have any magnitude. It doesn't have to have a magnitude of 1. This could be any real number. But this guy over here, it has to have a magnitude of 1. We define it to be a unit vector. So now what we also need is another vector to make a complete basis so we can span the entire two-dimensional plane. And we can't have that vector pointing in the same direction over here. What is really convenient is to have another vector that's perpendicular. So remember how these two guys over here, they are perpendicular. Their dot product is 0. They're at 90 degrees to each other. So if you put your hands out like this, you can actually see if this guy is i hat and this guy is j hat, they are perpendicular. And then you can put your hand in this two-dimensional plane, and you can construct any vector that sits in here. So what are we going to do? How are we going to find a vector that is perpendicular to this radial unit vector? Well, we can go in the angle. Uh, we can go in the direction of increasing angle, so the direction where theta is increasing. And if I lift my pen up this way, I'm actually increasing the angle. So if a vector is going like this, the angle is increasing. So let's draw a vector that points in this direction over here. And let's call that theta with a hat. So now we have to be careful. We don't want to confuse theta hat with theta. Theta is the coordinate. It is the angle from this axis. That's the angle that we're using to define the polar coordinate system. So r and theta uh, define every point. So every point on this two-dimensional plane can be written as x, y, 
that is the horizontal and the vertical component, or it can be written as r, comma, theta. r over here is a scalar value. This r is the radial distance. So you can think of that as the magnitude of this vector. Theta is also a scalar value. It is the angle as measured from this horizontal axis. So these guys are the Cartesian and the polar coordinate system. And these guys are just the coordinates. But these guys over here, these guys are the unit vectors. So these guys are both, they, they both have a magnitude of one and they are perpendicular to each other. So we know that these guys over here, they are perpendicular, this is 90 degrees, and these guys are also perpendicular. So this is the radial direction. So if you go up in this direction, you're increasing your radius. And this is the tangential direction. You can think of it as going on a tangent line that's tangent to a circle that you could draw over here. So if you drew a circle over here, the tangent line, that would be in the same direction as this theta hat. And theta hat is the unit vector. So if I move this position vector around, so imagine this is my radial vector, my radial unit vector r hat, and this is theta hat. If I move this around in the plane, you can see that by moving it around, I'm, I'm changing the direction of both of these guys. But I'm consistently changing it so that these guys stay perpendicular to each other. So what can I do? I can actually take these guys and find a relationship between them and these guys over here. Because these guys don't change. They stay fixed. It doesn't matter where the vector is, they're not going to change their direction. So i hat and j hat do not depend on the angle. And if we have some kind of time evolution where the angle is changing with respect to time, where if these guys are uh, changing with respect to time, then these guys are going to change with respect to time. But if x and y change with respect to time, there's not going to be any change with these guys. They are going to stay fixed. They're going to stay right there. So let's write a relationship between these guys and these guys. I want to be able to express this guy in terms of i hat and j hat. I want to do the same thing for theta. So let's draw a little picture over here. This, we can say, is the origin. This little dotted line, that is the positive horizontal axis. And I'll go this way over here, that is the negative horizontal axis. So we can draw i hat. i hat sits in this horizontal axis, and it points in the positive direction. By convention, that is to the right. So this is i hat. Then j hat points upwards. So I'll write j hat. And what we can do is we can pick uh, a general position. So this doesn't have to be in this orientation. It could be over here, it could be on the other side, or it could be down here. But let's, for, for convenience, let's pick uh, a place for this vector to be in this top right quadrant, where both of x and y are positive. So we want x and y to be positive, we want theta to be in between 0 and 90 degrees, and we also want this to be a non-zero uh, positive distance. So it's somewhere up here. So this is just uh, for making the diagram nice and neat. So it could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be in that particular place. So let's say we are moving a little bit up, and we have an angle between r hat and i hat. So I'll draw r hat. And one, one important thing to note is that these guys are all unit vectors. So they're actually going to lie on the unit circle. So imagine this is the unit circle. Every point on this unit circle is one unit away from the origin. So I'll put r hat over here. So this is going to be r hat. And I'll put r hat, I'll put the label over here. And the angle between r hat and i hat is theta. So this is theta away from the horizontal uh, axis. So we've got the positive horizontal axis, we're measuring the angle upwards from there. And where is theta hat going to be? Where is the unit vector in the tangential direction going to be? Well, it has to be perpendicular to this one, so it needs to point in this direction. So I'll try and draw that as perpendicular as possible on this whiteboard. So here we go. This is theta hat. So theta hat is this unit vector over here. And what is the angle that theta hat lies from this positive direction? So how far along is it? Well, we know this over here is 90 degrees. That's perpendicular. These guys are also perpendicular. So this guy has to be 90 degrees plus theta. So this angle all the way from here, I'm going to write it in radians. In radians, it's pi on 2 radians, that's 90 degrees, plus theta. That is the angle from here to here. So we're going to go into a little more detail in the next video as to how we actually decompose these guys. But what I want to do is, just to finish off this video, I want to write 
r hat and theta hat in terms of i hat and j hat. So let's do r hat first. r hat is going to be equal to, let's have a look at this little diagram over here. If we take the shadow, if we take a light source that's directly above and we cast the shadow down onto the horizontal axis, what we're going to get is cosine of theta times i hat. So this is going to get shrunk down because the shadow is only going to take cosine of theta. And we will go into more details as to how we apply trigonometry to break these guys up. But I'm just going to write these definitions down from this diagram. So we're going to have cosine of theta times i hat. And then the corresponding guy for the vertical axis, that's going to be sine theta. Sine theta times j hat. So we're scaling i hat to be cosine theta. And we're scaling uh, j hat to be sine theta. So these are the shadows that this vector is going to cast on both the horizontal and the vertical axis. And these shadows are called projection, taking the projection of one vector onto another. So cosine theta and sine theta, this is a, a pretty common uh, type of way of breaking up a vector. So why is there no factor over here? Well, it's because this is of unit length. So we have unit length, unit length, unit length, unit length. All of these guys sit on the unit circle. So this is a semicircle. And every point over here is one unit away from the origin. Now let's do theta hat. So we've got r hat and theta hat. What's the difference between these two guys? Well, this guy is another 90 degrees. So it's just a rotation of 90 degrees. And if we add pi on two radians, which is 90 degrees, to this angle theta, then we're going to end up moving it a quarter cycle around. So what happens to cosine and sine if you move them a quarter cycle around? Well, let's write it down. We're going to go into a little more detail and find a visual intuition for what happens. But I'll just tell you in this video, cosine of theta turns into minus sine of theta. And that's the i hat gets scaled by minus sine theta. And then what happens to sine of theta? Well, cosine of theta is what sine of theta becomes. So now what we have is a relationship that links i hat and j hat to r hat and theta hat. Can you see what happened over here? The derivative of cosine theta with respect to theta is minus sine theta. And the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So taking the derivative is equivalent to rotating a quarter of the cycle around the circle. That's not a coincidence. That is exactly what we wanted. And we'll see that in the next video, where we actually draw a big version of this diagram and work out all of the, the details of the trigonometry. But what's important to remember is that this guy over here is now in negative distance. Why is this negative? Why is this minus sign? Why isn't it plus sign? Well, if you look over here, the horizontal component of theta hat is in the leftward direction. So it is negative. This is a negative horizontal component. But this guy is still positive. So positive cosine theta, that is this upward direction. So we can actually think of this as a right angle triangle being rotated and put on its side. And then the sine and, th uh, sine and cosine actually swap places. But they don't just swap places, a minus sign is introduced over here because it's no longer in the positive direction, it's now in the negative direction. Both the horizontal and vertical uh, components are in the positive direction over here. So keep in mind that as you change theta, as theta moves around all the way to the unit circle, as, as we trace the entire circle around, what we're actually going to see is that these guys are going to change sign. So the sign of the, the uh, cosine is actually going to change. And by sign, I mean sine as in plus or minus, not sine as in the sine function. So the sine will change as you rotate around. If these guys are sitting in this quadrant over here, they're going to have different signs. And their components might be negative, negative, and not just positive, positive. So you can see that it's not a simple picture because these guys depend on the angle theta. And in general, if you have some kind of dynamics problem, and r and theta both depend on time, if these are time-dependent quantities, then this is going to have a time dependence as well. Because if it depends on the angle and the angle depends on time, then these guys are both going to change with respect to time. So the time evolution of the system is actually going to be described very well by this. Because what you're doing is you're creating a coordinate system that moves with the particle. This coordinate system over here it doesn't move with the particle. If the particle is whizzing around over here, these guys are fixed. So you have to describe the particle in terms of fixed coordinates. And that can be very convenient. Cartesian coordinates are very convenient. But sometimes if you have a circular symmetry, or if something is going around a central object, then it's a lot more uh, convenient to use these 
unit vector. These unit vectors, they actually move with the particle. And this can actually be thought of as a frame of reference with this particle rotating around some center. So we'll keep examining those ideas and build upon these definitions. But the most important message to take away from this video is this relationship. So how we can construct i hat and j hat, uh, we can actually take i hat and j hat and construct r hat and theta hat. We can go from the Cartesian unit vectors to the polar unit vectors. Keep in mind, this is in two dimensions. So all of these, these little videos over here are just concerned with two dimensions. We will be talking about three dimensions and extensions of the polar coordinates into three dimensions in later videos. Now, why are we doing this? This is very useful in classical mechanics, and it's very useful in quantum mechanics. We definitely need these coordinate systems to describe things in two dimensions and in three dimensions. So if you want to watch more of these videos, make sure you find all the videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find them if you click over 